My name is Brian Davis. I'm an associate professor of landscape architecture here at the University of Virginia, and I'm co-director of the Natural Infrastructure Lab. I set up this lab to work with communities and uh, agencies and other collaborators to help people ask design questions about their landscapes focused on the potential for natural infrastructure to solve real world problems and express our cultural values in a time of climate change. Natural infrastructure is working with natural forms and systems and processes to get desirable effects. So to attenuate waves, to slow erosion, to restore wetlands. Natural infrastructure actually can be applied to a lot of different landscapes, but in this lab we tend to focus on the coastal and estuary landscapes of uh, of the North Atlantic. So one place that we've been working over the last couple years is Assateague Island National Seashore. That's a national park site and um, it's a barrier island off the coast of Maryland and Virginia. Um, it has been um, not so much eroding but moving. The island itself is migrating as, as a result of sea level rise primarily and um, that's not necessarily bad for that type of landscape but it is uh, especially complex when you have roads, campsites, and other facilities that humans like to maintain so that we can benefit from the experience of the national park. It's an interesting moment to try to work out what it means to inhabit and appreciate a barrier island um, in this time, in a time of climate change. One of the things that, the, that we understood from the Park Service is um, a way that they appreciate it and that their visitors appreciate it is uh, that it is so natural, that it is a big moving system with migrating dunes and broad open beaches and wetlands on the backside and fish and crabs. And conventional infrastructures that may slow erosion um, would tend to destroy all of those qualities and characteristics. So in many ways, it's a real, um, it's a great crucible for working out questions about natural infrastructure at a large scale. My name is Adrian Robbins. Um, I'm a research specialist at the Natural Infrastructure Lab. Um, I've been here just a couple months now. I started in July. Um, I graduated from the Master of Landscape Architecture program at UVA uh, in May and then started two months after that. Coming from an environmental science background, I was used to kind of thinking at the more macro, regional, or like territorial scale. Um, something that landscape architecture taught me is like shifting scales often from you know as big of a range as you can so down to the micro scale to the site scale to the regional scale and then even beyond to the global scale um, you learn the relationships between these scales you can take a single thing like a grain of sand and understand it at these different scales um, understand the dynamics that they're under what the contributions are so that the wave basin here this is a 1 to 20 scale of Assateague Island. Um, what we're able to see when we kind of like shift down and understand, not only like understand what the forms that we're making are, but ask questions about how things can scale down or up. So it's not only a question of, you know, discovery, but it's a, it's a exercise in asking the right questions. I'm Ruby Zlinski. I'm the project manager here at the Natural Infrastructure Lab. And so that pretty much means that I run the day-to-day -day, um, goings-on of the lab. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Adrian and I were in North Carolina um, on the coast uh, of the Outer Banks, and we spent like five days in a swamp. <laughs> and um, we were just kind of like experiencing the landscape, and we were fortunate enough to meet with one of our um, project partners down there that works for the Fish and Wildlife Service. And we, we really got to see this landscape through the eyes of a geomorphologist, which was also really fascinating. I feel like the Natural Infrastructure Lab is really interesting because it's got this intersection between um, like traditional kind of landscape architecture work, um, but also a little bit of science, uh, even though we don't call ourselves scientists, and a little bit of art. Uh, and so I think I'm really excited to see how the three of those things can kind of converge as our work moves forward. My name is Emma Potter, and here at the Natural Infrastructure Lab, I am the project associate. The project that we are working on now, we are looking at 13 species. Um, we are investigating the growth of plants and their migration, stressors, um, and other factors. The process and methodology of our work here at the lab, um, in a day-to-day, -day, it looks like monitoring the plants, checking on their health status, making sure they're looking good and feeling good. 
Um, and that also looks like downloading data um, from our data science team that we work with. So here at the lab, we are um, prepping the plants, we are germinating them and getting them ready um, so that when we go out to the farm at Morven, um, that they can be tested and monitored in a fuller capacity. It's really exciting to have been able to transition from design school um, to a research lab. Everything with this um, position does come with this uh, foundation in landscape architecture, of course. So I'm deploying my graphic skills and then I'm also deploying my plant knowledge when it comes to being here in the lab and um, working with these species. My name is Michael Lugering and I'm the PI at the Natural Infrastructure Lab for the Urban Planning with Integrated Natural Systems grant. The Natural Infrastructure Lab is an umbrella lab or organization that looks at several critical aspects of climate adaptation from riverine through coastal change and the ways in which plants, sediment, and other natural systems can be manipulated to engage those changes effectively. The work of the Harris Street Lab looks at the plant at a very specific scale. From adaptive management, where we consider or trial how we encourage plants to change their habit and form, all the way through to how we can study those individual plant changes and growth from a monitoring perspective. When we think about something like a fundamental signature, which is a non-visible spectral collection of a plant's thumbprint, the ability to do that at a one-on-one -on -one to one plant scale is a vital methodological step for ultimately being able to see plants at a, at a vast, large regional territorial scale, which is necessary to monitor them effectively as infrastructure. And the work we do both at the Morphin Sustainability Lab on our trial farm, as well as in our regional testing in the Chesapeake Bay, because that intermediate step allows us to, to engage controlled experimentation at a big enough scale to understand its functionality, but at a small enough scale that we can monitor it effectively to describe the methods that would allow you to do this. Getting to be a part of the Natural Infrastructure Lab is a really special experience. We work and interact on a nearly daily basis with an, a, such a wide array of people from specialized data scientists, engineers, landscape architects, architects, hydrologists. It, it really runs the gamut. And those types of relationships and learning and building of projects and ideas is a really vital part of who we are and what we do. Not only that, we also have the opportunity to work with policymakers in the federal government and with specific important federal legislators who help guide and fund and pursue this work at such a high level. So when we think about what the Natural Infrastructure Lab is and what makes it so interesting to work with, it's because we really do from top to bottom, inside to out, engage in nearly every facet of what it means to make, design, realize, manage, and ultimately engage the public in the creation of natural infrastructure.